I'm Mike Hanewald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, and want to talk about fungicide on soybeans. We're getting to about that time here, and uh, that's, that's something that we've seen to be a very consistent practice in PFR. Now, the first thing is the importance of getting the timing right and getting that done at the R3 grow stage. R3 is beginning pod. And so as you see the data on your screen there, you'll see that <clears throat> hitting that timing right um, is the only time that we're really profitable. And I know that with um, you know, a question on commodity prices comes up and you see that R3 is on average over seven years when we're profitable, but that's even um, down to a $5.75 um, price on beans. And so that's kind of that break even price is $5.75 if you hit R3. So as long as we're selling our beans for more than that, and we have results similar to what we've seen in PFR, we would see that positive ROI of that R3 fungicide pass. If you're too early at R2 or too late at R4, um, that's going to um, reduce that profitability. And then you would need to sell your beans for $11 in order to be profitable with that fungicide pass. So it's really important that we hit that R3 timing. Now, how to properly identify R3 is you need to look at the top four nodes. And so <clears throat> when you do that, you can see that picture on your screen um, shows that up close, but I'm going to show you on a real plant here. And so we look at those top four. So we have one, two, three, four that we're looking at. And you can see that these flowers are mature and you can see some of those dead petals, but that pod hasn't started to grow yet. So this would still be considered an R2 plant. We have flowers top to bottom, but we haven't quite started to see those, those developing pods. Now, if we look at the lower nodes here, you'll see that those pods have developed and we would have that 3 16ths of an inch pod there. However, it's not in the top four nodes, so we're not quite there yet. So top four nodes, 3 16ths of an inch pod, that's the start of R3, but it's just as important to know the end. The end of R3 is a three quarter inch pod in these top four nodes. And so that's what we're looking for and it's really important to hit that. Normally it's about a seven to 10 day window, depending on what the weather is, is like. Um, why we think that's important, most of your yield comes from the center of the plant, um, node 6 through 13, according to the University of Illinois. Um, we currently have 10 nodes on this plant here, and we're not quite to R3. So by the time we get there, um, I would expect that we're going to have 11 or 12 nodes. And so our fungicide is going to be protecting the majority of the plant that's going to produce the majority of the yield. So we've identified timing as the most important factor. What are some other things we can do then if we hit that timing right to help that fungicide be more profitable? So the first thing is picking a fungicide that has multiple modes of action. We've got several PFR proven fungicides that we've tested in BEX and the common theme uh, through our PFR testing has been that multiple mode of action. Next is the gallons that we use. So if we're going across with a ground rig sprayer, um, we've seen an advantage to spraying 20 gallons the acre. Um, and I know that takes more time to fill, but we've seen that, that benefit in some additional yield. However, it's not as important as the R3 timing. So if the only way to get all your acres covered at R3 is to spray a 10 gallon the acre and cover more acres on each fill, do that because you got to hit the R3. Next, spraying in the morning. Um, we've seen an advantage, about a half bushel that we gain um, spraying in the morning. And um, that the plant is cooler, it's more receptive, it's gonna take that fungicide in um, more efficiently and get more of it into the plant to get a, a better, um, better benefit. Um, however, once again, not as important as R3. So if you need to spray all day to get your acres covered at all R3, by all means, do that. Um, last comment as far as a best practice on soybean fungicide is gonna be nozzles. Um, we, see, we have seen a benefit um, to the green leaf turbo drop dual fan nozzle that's actually earned PFR proven status. It's got two independent tips that spray two different directions and we've seen a yield gain by getting better coverage um, from that. Um, so another consideration, if you have an option for those, those nozzles, um, that works. Otherwise, a true flat fan that gets you some finer, finer droplets is gonna be good too. Anything you can do to increase your coverage, similar to a nozzle you might use if you're spraying Liberty herbicide. Now in Northern Ohio and Northeast Indiana, one of, a common occurrence is that our beans can be planted late, especially on the heavy clay soils. It may be late May or early June before we get a window to plant our beans. And a common question I receive is, is it worth spending the money on a fungicide and those late planted beans that are probably going to have reduced yield compared to our April or early May planted beans? The answer to that is yes. And our PFR data has shown that with three years of testing that we have where we've seen 
actually even more yield advantage to spraying a fungicide on those late planted beans. Most likely because that fungicide keeps that plant healthier just a little bit longer, it extends that growing season out just a little bit and can hopefully add some yield to those. So as long as you have some beans that look respectable and look like they can produce a decent yield, even if it's not gonna be your best yielding field, that fungicide can still pay. Last point I'll make to wrap up is, is there anything you should add to the tank if you're going across the field to spray this fungicide? And there are several PFR proven foliar feed products um, that we have through, through um, that we've tested through PFR and you can see those there on your screen. If you notice the common thread amongst all of them is boron. So just like we'd recommend adding to the tank if you're spraying fungicide on corn, our recommendation is gonna stay the same for the beans. Boron is very important to the late growth and late grain fill of, of these plants. And it's interesting, we've seen boron in soybeans actually two different timings, R1 and R3 pay. So if you've already sprayed a foliar feed with a herbicide pass, maybe at or just before flowering, um, you might, you would, I would still encourage to consider using a boron um, based product for this late pass at R3. If you have any questions about these or any other agronomic topics, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative and we'd be happy to help. Stay safe.